Hey y'all, Jason here with Dirt Race Life. Do you have an engine running warmer than it should in your car? Are you missing your fan shroud? Or is your fan shroud not as good as you think it should be? If you're answering yes to any of this, or you just wanna see how to optimize your cooling system, this is your episode. Let's get busy. What we're working on here today is a Crate Racing USA 602 Sportsman Lake model. This belongs to a young man that's a friend of mine. Him and his family have been working super hard to get this car competitive. This is their first full year in, in the Sportsman Lake model class, and he's winning feature races, but they're overheating, and it brings up a real common issue. It applies across the board to you know, all of your racing types where you know, you're running gasoline and you're running especially like large V8 engines with radiator in the front, you have to run a fan shroud. Um, there's no scenario on gasoline with a V8 you know, on a radiator setup like this, whether it be you know, a hobby stock, a pure street, a street stock, a late model, a modified, there's no setup where that it would be appropriate to not run a fan shroud. That doesn't mean that you don't have a setup where that you're able to keep the engine cool enough because you can overcompensate in a lot of different ways, but you're chasing around the problem when it's an airflow issue. And you could run a lot less expensive radiator or less radiator um, or a simpler setup, you know, if you just had a appropriately built fan shroud. And so I I'm, I'm believe passionately about this think that this is putting people out of races or putting them you know, out of racing for the season if they lose a motor over one of the least expensive things that you could build. And so that's what we're doing here. And I just wanna show you where we're starting. Where this is at is like with this car, they ran a feature where they ran 20 laps straight. And so he was running like 240 at the end of the race. And it's a 602, it's professionally being uh, redone and gone through, it's tagged and sealed, it's right, the carburetor's right, the time's right, it's been done, everything's been done by professionals on it. The radiator is right on it, there's no issue with it. He's just not getting airflow through the radiator. He's got a 17 inch fan, this is one of the multi-blades that can go from like two to four blades, it's a good fan, 17 inch. And I was gonna show you, this fan is standing about two inches off of this radiator is where it's at. And I want to just show you on a dry erase board right quick what is actually going on here. And it wouldn't matter how close I got this fan to this radiator, it's not going to work appropriately without a shroud. So let's do that. So here's what's going on. Put the dry erase board just right over the top of the radiator and everything. So what we're going to do is, here's our radiator right here. And here's the engine. Okay. All right. We're going to, here's our fan right here. Okay, here's the reason you have to run a fan shroud. We think that air, let's see, what is air gonna be? Air is gonna be red, all right? We think air is just gonna go through and it's just gonna pull like that. And we think that's what it's gonna do, okay? And we say, well, yeah, we lose a little bit, you know, on these edges. That's not what happens, okay? When you're at low RPM, air will flow through here similar to this. So like when you're idling around the pit, so you're just in the shop, you know, it, it'll pull air through. This will be sitting here spinning. And as the fan is turning, when, it, when the fan's turning slow, this air will, it will follow this direction. It will say, well, okay, I'm happy with that. And so it'll just, it'll breeze through like that. Well, what happens is on the track at high RPM, you start really compressing that air, okay? So air is a compressible. Liquids, you know, aren't, and air is. Air is a compressible. And when I say compressible, what I mean is, is that you will create this, this big boundary of high pressure behind here, and you will create a negative vacuum that's real hard right here. And what will happen is this air will transfer around the blade. It will travel. So as you're, so what happens is, is this air, you'll get some air that travels through here, 
but it will become this real high pressure front behind this flame blade right here, and it will become this real low pressure area right here at high RPMs, you know, when you're at 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 RPMs. And so this air, this pressure will push off the end of this blade and this low pressure right here, it's just gonna pull it right back around. And so what happens is, is that when you, when you turn, as you turn more RPMs, you end up with less air going through the radiator instead of more. And of course, if you've got a car um, like a leg model with a whole nose cut off where you're not pushing air through because you're at speed, um, then that you know, makes that problem that much worse. And the reason that some of us you know, running street stocks and hobbies and pures and stuff are getting away with not having to run a fan shroud is because we're cutting the whole front of the nose up and have it way off the ground and we're just getting enough air that is just traveling and pushing through and we're running a double pass or a triple pass radiator. We're not addressing the actual root cause of the problem, but we're, we're crutching enough in other ways that we're compensating for it. But we're playing with fire um, because you know it, it's you don't have an appropriately built system and you could look down and you've done melted a motor down. Um, if you're just kind of running, you know, cool or running, you think cool enough and you don't have this built right. All right. So let's talk about how do you stop this problem? Well, that's the reason for a shroud. Okay. Because when you take and you build a shroud around this, what you're doing is, is at high RPM, when this compression is happening right here, you're closing off this path for it to travel, okay? So you, you no longer have this compressible air, you know, that's at high pressure right here having a path. And so now you have this low pressure front, but instead of this low pressure front just being right in front of the blade, you've, you've quarantined off this area in front of the fan between it and the radiator. So now you've made this entire area right here a low pressure system. So this is low pressure right here. Well, if you've made all of that low pressure, where is it gonna get the air from? Well, it's gonna start pulling it through every vent through that radiator, not just the ones in front of the fan, it's gonna pull them through all of them. And even if you've got this shroud up fairly close to the radiator on these edges, it's still gonna pull air and that air is gonna travel down, you know, and don't get me wrong, you need to have some gap right here. You know, you need to have an inch, you know, of, of room if you can would be optimal. Um, but yeah, so this low pressure right here, it's gonna start pulling air through. There's another element to fan shrouds and why they need to be built a specific way. People will argue over whether a fan shroud should, the fan should not be in the shroud at all. It should be halfway in the shroud or it should be all the way in the shroud. Um, and there's, at, there's science behind this. It should specifically be at a certain level. And I'll tell you where it is. It should be, the, the shroud should be about one inch over the fan, between a half inch and one inch. It doesn't have to be exact, but there is a scientific reason for this, okay? When we have this shroud, all right, and I'm gonna put it at this half inch, and we'll do it like, or say one inch, in like that. Let's just imagine that that fan is, is one inch in, somewhere almost halfway to the fan, all right? The reason for that is because you have a leading edge, you have a leading edge of this fan where it cuts the air. So you, you're knifing in on this, on this leading edge of this fan, and in front of that leading edge, you're gonna have negative air pressure to the atmosphere. So like, it's gonna be that the atmospheric pressure right here is lower. And then behind the fan, the atmospheric pressure is higher than it naturally is, okay? And so right in here where you've got this, oh, that pin's done. So up here where you've got all of this, um, come on, Jay. So up here, you've got all this negative pressure. Back here, you've got all this positive, all right? If you extend this shroud on back, well, the positive pressure 
actually is in the blades themselves. So once that leading edge cuts into that air, it, it's gathering that air up and it's compressing it and creating this pressurized air. Pressurized and creating pressure in itself creates heat, by the way. But you've got all this pressurized air right here. And that leading edge right there, any, any fan um, shroud that goes past that, all it's doing is, is it's delaying its exit point, okay? So it's making, so it, it's, what it's doing is, is it's limiting the amount of air that it can pull through because this air right here will reach a maximum pressure where above that, above whatever that is, increased RPMs won't pull more air through, all right? And for that reason, uh, alone, plus a couple more we're gonna cover. If I take and I open that up, as long as my fan shroud extends past that leading edge, I'm giving this high pressure zone a larger area to evacuate from. So I'm letting that air off. And there's a couple more things going on. In reality, when you're deep like this, the pressure zone or the wave is even higher out on the edges of this fan. So the highest pressure, the most resistance to the air movement, whether it's being gathered up and squeezed, is right out against the fan shroud. And the reason for that is because um, it's centrifugal force. The fan is turning and it's actually sweeping and pushing the air out radially. And so what happens is, is that I get, I have you know, high pressure through the middle here, and then it increases towards the edge. So I really want that to be open because I want that to be able to escape off. And as far as the low pressure on the, lead, on the, on the front edge, well, what it really comes down to is that I don't want to have my fan shroud to be so close to my fan blades that if anything happens, if anything gets out of adjustment, if the radiator shifts or anything happens, that my fan is gonna strike my shroud. We don't wanna do that. And so for that reason, I put a half inch gap all the way around. Well, that half inch gap, you know, if I was perfectly right on the edge of the fan with that half inch gap, I will create a, 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 a wave right here where it starts running around on that corner. And if I'll go back about a half inch to an inch, I can eliminate that wave and air will just travel in one direction and I'll stop that wraparound from happening. And so that's the reason. If it was perfect and you were, if you had a perfect system and everything was perfectly tight, you could put that shroud right to the front edge of that fan and it would work perfectly. Um, but the fan blades themselves are rounded on the front corners. They don't come out to a perfect edge. And so for that reason, you want to be back. You don't want to be any deeper. So let's imagine that you're not running a fan shroud, but you say, I'm going to put the fan all the way up against the radiator. So I'm going to put it, let's just say, let's be reasonable. You've got a half inch gap. I think that's about as close as anybody would be willing to go. Half inch gap, okay? Well, first off, air is going to wrap around. This is going to go in that half inch gap, okay? It's, it's going to do it. You're, you're going to lose... You're gonna lose this outside edge, you know, a couple of inches of your fan. It's gonna wrap. It's just gonna, you're gonna have um, air that's being turbulated around that end on, on each side. Now that's gonna happen, okay? Even if you had it up at a half inch, it's gonna do it. But here's the other thing that's going on. I don't know if y'all thought about this or not, but, but it's doing it. That high pressure that's wrapping, all that high pressure, there's a wave. Again, when the air is coming through the fan, it's radially pushing air out. So this is a high pressure zone all around this fan. So the whole rest of the radiator, we've created a high pressure zone on this side of the, of the fence, on both edges of the fan, okay, by not having a shroud, even though it's right up against the radiator. So what's that doing? Well, I can tell you what it's doing. It's stopping all of that air from coming through that radiator anywhere outside of that fan. This scenario, it gets hotter than if I'd have had that fan back here. As crazy as that sounds, but I, and I have had 
like exactly this described to me by people. And, and years ago, I didn't understand. They're like, you know, man, we've, you know, this thing's been overheating and we moved it all the way up against the radiator and it's even worse than it was. And, you know, I was scratching my head and then we worked out the math on it and started looking at it from the engineering standpoint. And it, it was making it worse. And this is why, because the air was being pulled through right in the middle and then it was making this big wave of high pressure off the edge of the fan. It was just stopping all other air from coming through. So it was even worse. And that's the reason you have to run a fan shroud. Not I'd like to, not, you know, well, if we can get around to it. No, stop what you're doing. Build a fan shroud. You, you need one. All right, so we're gonna put one on this car. We're gonna try to set it. Nothing's perfect. Um, if we get the layout and it looks good and I'm three quarters of an inch or I'm one inch or a half inch or anywhere in that zone on that front half of that fan, I'm happy. If we end up and we're a little bit deep and the whole fan's in there, we'll take it off and we'll trim it back. But that's our plan, that's what we're gonna do. So let's physically do it. It's really not that hard. The first step that we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a piece of sheet aluminum on to the back of this radiator right here. And what I'm looking for is 20 and a half inches. I want a 20 and a half sheet. And then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna bend it on the top and the bottom. So it's 20 and a half inches of flat sheet. And then I'm going to put a 90 degree bend in the bottom where there's a wrap. So it'll wrap under and I got something to pop it to. And I don't want, I don't want this right up against the radiator. I don't want over time to like cut a hole in my radiator by rubbing or anything. Um, and that's what they make Gorilla Tape for. And, uh, you know, but if it's, as long as we make a fairly, a fairly small gap right here, it's fine. But I like to tape it up is the way I like to do it. Um, but uh, we'll make it small enough, we may not have to tape it, it'll be fine. All right, all right, so then, so we're gonna do a 20 and a half, let me write that down. We're gonna do a 20 and a half sheet in height, and we'll wrap it over the top and we'll wrap it over the top by one inch. We'll be fine. So we're going to go one inch over the top. We'll put a bend in it. We'll notch out for these pieces right here. Put a one inch bend in the top of it. And then we will put a, let's see what it's going to take to get the bottom up there. It's going to take two inches to get the bottom there. All right, so I got 20 and a half with one inch on the top and two inches on the bottom. So I'm gonna take a 23 and a half inch piece. So 23 and a half inches long, and we'll put our bins in it. And then on the width, we're gonna go over the radiator itself, not in the thin area, because you're gonna cut that radiator if you get down in the fins. So we wanna be from neck, from the neck over there, overlapping over here, but not in the way of the cap or anything. And I think, I think 24 inches is going to be ideal and we'll do a little bit of notch out on that side around around the necks themselves where we don't rub them but yeah 24 inches so we're going to do 23 and a half by 24 inches is what we're going to do all right we're going to cut a square out of metal that's the first step all right let's get this metal cut We said we're going to do one inch and two inches. Believe. So, yep. Let's do the two inches here. Let's see, it's on the 23 and a half. Make sure I get it. Yep. Yeah. Alright, so we got two inches on the bottom. Alright, so there's my two inches. And then I am one inch on the top. I'm not gonna get out my metal brake just for this. So I'm gonna show y'all a quick hack. I've got a sharp edge on my, on my jig right here, okay? Throw my metal up here. I got my piece of inch and a half square here. I'm gonna go down 
just to bend this up, I'm not going to drag my metal brake out. I'm just going to show you all a, a quick hack here. Um, just to bend this up right quick. Put a block of wood out like that. Now, there you go. Quick and easy. Didn't have to get the bender out. Yay! If I'm lucky, I'm gonna have to pull this fan off. Oh, that's good. So then that is going. Come on, Betsy. You can do it. Alright, so I've got it in there. Just, I mean, real time. Like, I've got like 10 minutes in doing this. I swear, real time. And got pretty close. So what I'm gonna do is. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of leeway around my necks there. So I'm just gonna put a little mark there. Y'all see that? Let me see. All right. So we've got it in. That lip under the bottom, I've got up against it where it's gonna be down at the bottom. I'm gonna do just a little bit of relief just around this neck where if anything shifts over time, I don't end up like cutting into that neck right there. Do the same thing down here. Just make sure on these radiators, be careful. Make sure you don't have anything sitting there rubbing that vibration over time. You'll cut a hole in something. So we're going to put ourselves a few little reliefs in here. Maybe just a little something right there. Then let's, so we're going to pull it back out and trim those. Y'all see that yellow right there? That's that two inch bend wrapping up underneath this one inch uh, radiator support right here. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put a quarter inch hole on each side. We're gonna put a threaded nut insert where that we can, we can, the radiator is gonna come out without having to take this shroud off. We just wanna make it like if you're pulling the engine or something, be able to get it off now the way easy. So pop rivets would work. You just have to cut them out to. Yeah, pop rivets would work. You would just have to, Cut them out every time you had to take it off for some reason. So we're gonna put we're gonna put our guy some threaded nut inserts in there. All right, so we'll just slide that back, and then we'll drill that with uh, I think it's a five sixteenths, and put the inserts in it right quick. I said five sixteenths, but it's three eighths, which for this one I use a twenty three sixty fourths. Check this out. Um, what we got here? Threaded nut insert, quarter inch bolt been bent, flat piece of steel with a hole drilled through it and a nut on top. That lets you be able to drive that, spin that nut down without it turning your threaded insert so you can insert that. So just keeps you from having to buy a tool. I just make these up as I need them and use them real handy. Real handy, but that works just like this right here. Cause I can just take and Stick it in there and spin her till the cows come home. Man, I should have told them to wash this car before they brought it to me. Got dirt flying. All right. got our threaded nuts insert in. We're gonna throw us some quarter twin bolts in there right quick for just a, just a second. Just to hold it in place while we work on the top. We'll have to take it back loose and it'll have to come out a couple of times. But we'll just run these in here. So she's bolted now in the bottom and so now it's where it's supposed to be. And I'm just gonna check right quick. And I'm clear of my hoses. All that looks fine. Clear over here, everything looks great. Now this piece right here is what we're gonna attach it to. And this piece, since it unbolts here, we're gonna take and we're gonna permanently attach it to that top support. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna line this up 
with the holes, which is right here. And I'm gonna put me a mark there. And it is literally flush on that end. And so now it's gonna sit right inside that lip. This is gonna sit right back in place where it's supposed to go. Everything's gonna be hunky-dory and happy. And that is going to work really good because this wasn't quite fitting correctly before. And so we're going to make it, yeah, we're going to make it fit tight like it was supposed to to start with. So I'm going to take, we're going to turn around and unbolt this and pull it right back off. But before we do, let's go ahead, since we've got it bolted up firm, let's go ahead and mark the center. So this is a trick. So we want a half inch gap around this edge right here on this fan for where the shroud's going to be. And the trick is to get the exact center of the fan, um, it, you know, where the center is. And so let me show you how we're going to do that. So we want to make sure that we get the shroud as well centered as we can. The, um, the multi-blade assemblies make it really easy. I'm just going to take a quarter inch bolt and stick through one of the holes and drive it forward. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a circle by making a circle to it. Then, and this is bolted in its final place. I put those two bolts first. So now I can take and I can make a mark on the outside of that bolt. And then I can turn around. I can make multiples to that same outside of that bolt. By doing this, we're gonna, we're gonna find the true, the true center, quick and easy. And we know when we put this thing together, we won't hit the fan. We don't want to hit this expensive fan. It's a beautiful thing. So we don't want to mess it up. I have taken on these and just like taped a magic marker to the side of it and made a circle like that, same difference. It's just however you can do it. But I do recommend something that is based off of the water pump assembly and not just a guesstimate because it's irritating to go to put all this back together and your fan is hitting on one side or something. Um, so don't have that problem. I have done that before. Yep. All right. Okay, so that's enough. Take that bolt out. Now we're gonna unbolt it and pull it right back out and we can get to the really good stuff. Now we've got all our marks here on our circle, so now we're just going to take and go point to point several times. So I marked it, looks like four and a half inches is what that was, so four and a half is two and a quarter, so I'm going to just take a couple of points here and do this two and a quarter over and over and over and find that, find that center. And so it's right there. And we're 17 inches on the fan. We want to have a half inch around the fan blade all the way around. So that means that we would add one inch to that overall. So that's 18 inches. And we're going to go from the center. From the center of 18 inches is 9 inches. So I'm going to set the compass to 9 inches. Now this is, I'm gonna put this exactly nine inches and you could, you know, the, 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 the piece that you add to it is what has to be nine, but I use this as my guide. And if it gets too complicated if I tried to make this larger or it curled in and stuff, it'd probably be better, but I think we'd have to buy something store-bought to do that. All right, so I'm in the middle. Of course, I still got the plastic on there, so it just scratches a good line. And go all the way around it. Now, I'm gonna make a really nice, deep, hard scored line that I cannot lose. Now this is key right here. We are not going to cut this out. We're gonna put the shroud on, pop rivet it together and everything while this is still in place because this is keeping us all firm, then we're gonna to need to add our shroud so that it becomes a structure when we cut this out, because it's all get flimsy if I don't. 
All right, so I got that marked. Now the next thing is, I was going to show you all a formula. So you have to figure out what your circumference is. What's that distance around there? Uh, the formula for it would be pi times diameter. Uh, if you look it up, it'll say like 2r pi, and that's like twice the radius, so diameter. So like we're 18 inches across here, and so it's 18 times pi. Pi is 3.14, so it's 3.14 times 18. I'm going to already tell you all that's 56.5 um, roughly is what that is, 56 and a half inches. I'm going to add two more inches because I want to overlap. I want that cuff to have an overlap where I can pop read it together. So I need 58 and a half inches, so I need to... Give me a piece of metal 58 and a half inches. And then also the other thing is how wide does that metal need to be? So y'all come over here. Let's, let's have a look. So the next question is that band that goes around it, how wide does it need to be? All right, so I know where my metal sits. My metal sits, so I'm going to line it up with my brace here. And we're going to be sitting so Two and a half inches is to the front of the blades. Three inches puts them a half inch in. Okay, so I want three inches of band of on the, um, on the fan shroud. I want three inches, and I'm gonna use one inch folded back to attach it. So I'm gonna cut me a four inch wide piece and bend one inch of it um, back for me to pop rivet it together. That's what we're gonna do. I found me a nice piece of purple plastic that was wide enough that I had. I got all kind of plastic here. And I was going to use metal, but this plastic's the right color. It's the right color scheme for the car and everything. I can't help myself. But I am going to say this. If you use plastic, you're going to have to be careful because like this is three inches wide and that's fine with plastic but if you get really long with that shroud that plastic that that low pressure in front of it will pull that plastic into the fan when it's short and stiff it's fine but if you get very deep you're going to need to use aluminum so hopefully nothing you've seen so far is anything that requires any really special tools or, or anything um, Nothing difficult here. If you, like, if you like how this is going so far, smash the like button and let me know. I think this is, I'm hoping that this one right, this video right here saves a few people's engines. I can tell you just one or two guys' engines and then they keep racing. Never know, that might be the difference keeps the track open. Cut loose. As we say, we wanted 56, it was 56 and a half inches actual distance around it. So we want to mark that. So 56 and a half is right there. Alright, so that's what we're going to join it at. going to cut this little bottom piece here loose so that's going to get in our way and I'm going to turn around and I'm going to just take and just make one inch I don't even measure these I just guess it doesn't matter um, so I'm just going to go the whole way around through here Alright, y'all take a look. So I cut it. It's actually about four and three-eighths of an inch total here. The reason being is, is I made sure I had one inch of flange here, and then after I got it bent, then I took and measured three inches across here to make sure I got my measurement for that fan shroud to be out as far as I expected it to. Then I turned around because I used this plastic and if I did aluminum, I would have done the same thing with aluminum. I sat here and I made one inch rips all the way around this. I thought I might could, you know, take a heat gun and heat that and stretch and make this work without having to cut it. Not going to happen, which that's fine. This is what I normally do. All right, so 
We've got this. We've got this line. We're going to put a joint at the bottom. We're going to start. This is super simple. I'm going to rivet it now. Now, it's not a problem for me to have the... This stands off of the radiator, you know, like a half of an inch. So, not a problem for me to have the inside of the rivet. If there's any concern about the rivets, you probably want to, like, clecko it from this side and then flip it over and put rivets through from the other side. But... Um, I want to put the flush on the outside and look nicer and they're, they're not going to create a problem inside. The main thing here is, is I want to make sure when I look down through there, that this score line I put, that this is, this score line is inside of this wall because that represents that half inch gap to the edge of that fan. And you're going to get some distortion that's going to happen. So I want to make sure, and I want the, I want my pop rib to be just in the middle. First one's the hardest. Get them in there and you don't have to put them in every single hole. I'll probably go back and add more. Um, Cause this is a, oh, whoo, I almost forgot. Oh, I put that on. Let's get that plastic off. I hate trying to peel plastic out from around things that have already been assembled. That is just a nightmare. That's the reason that I scored that, because by scoring it, I don't, if, I just, if I just had that circle with a marker, you pull the plastic off and you lose it. So it's scored all the way through. So. All right, so we put the first one in here like this. Lock it in place. Let's see here. All right, and then remember we got this scored line. So what I'm going to do is about every third, about every third one, where we can maintain our line. Put a hole, drop a rivet, and we just work our way, just work our way the whole way around this thing, um, about every three inches, all the way around it. I've got rivets about every three inches all the way around it. You see how that looks on the back here. And then on this front right here, I'm just gonna clamp that together. I overlap to the outside. And I'm just gonna put it in there. And now these two rivets right here. So we've got a cuff. And we're gonna put these in with them facing outwards. And we're going to put a backer on it. Just like that. Quick check. Not going to be perfect, y'all. So that's about 18 and a quarter right there. That's about 18 and an eighth. That's about 18 right there. That plastic is flexing and bowing just a little bit. But what we're after is, is we're after a half inch cap all the way around it. What we don't want, we don't want the fan to strike into it. Of course, we got some safety margin because it is plastic, so that helps us. Now, the next thing we got to do is cut this center out right here. And it's all going to get flimsy when we do that. That's fine. And let's go ahead and attach that top plate to it where we get a little bit more rigidness before we put that center on. Bob, will you hand me that, uh, that top plate laying up there? The radiator support. Yeah, that piece right there. All right. So... This piece goes right here. Well, no, it doesn't go like that. It goes like this. Okay. And it's going to go right here. All right, so I got my top cap here. And the way we did it, the top cap, I'm going to attach this. This is the radiator support. We're attaching the fan shroud to it. So we'll pull this off and pull the fan shroud with it. Now, this is the, one of the only places where I'm worried about the pop rivet. So I'm gonna make sure that I pop rivet this with the smooth head on the inside out um, because that is gonna be contacting fairly close to the radiator right there. So we're gonna take and do that one. A little, just be a little bit more careful about exactly how that's gonna work. That's the only one though. Okay. So we're going to flip 
around to the back side to cut this out for a reason. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take, I got my mark in the middle. All right, drilled it through. to mark it a quarter inch short of where I did a while ago. Okay? What we're fixing to do is we're gonna put a little we're gonna put a little flare on it and that flare is gonna stiffen it up just a little bit and it's also gonna help us on airflow. So I'm gonna set this instead of setting it to nine inches this time, I'm gonna set it to eight and three quarters and that'll make sense in just a minute. Alright so now I'm gonna go around it Right there. Alright. Make us a nice circle. Alright, so we got that. So now we know where to go. Now, we need a hole. So I'm going to cut a hole. Ooh. Are you? Oh, my drill bit's pinned. Let me get another hole saw, y'all. Took that grinder and got down out to our actual line. Line. We're gonna turn around and we are going to get our dip blow hammer right here. All right, so we're gonna get our dip blow hammer. Oh, I'm gonna need a real hammer for that. So now I'm gonna take my ball. Flare that in. Remember, the air is going that way. And that's going to add strength to it because I'm going to put a curve in that aluminum. So I'm doing two things. One, I'm curving this over so the air will flow, but then I'm adding rigidity to it as well. And I'm helping to support that plastic around the edge. So just good all the way around. All right, so as you can see what we did is, is we left that last quarter inch That's the reason we shrunk that down and then we just wrapped that over So now imagine that air is coming out of that radiator. We'll think about this air in this corner right here So it's just rolling right off that corner that fans grabbing it. So not only that that curve radius right there That's giving us more structure so that this isn't distorting, you know during the run of it So if we worked all this out right, we only have to take the fan off one time, hopefully. So we got the fan off. I'll slide it in. And if it's nice to me, it's all going to work out. All right. Yeah, that's right. Throw the bottom bolts in. Oh. back over our front mounts. Yep, come on Bobby, get it in there. Yeah, and if we if we got everything just right, should be able to get a good little pinch on this top cap here. 
So it was wanting to, it was wanting to jump out from underneath the top cap, but now we've got this back captured, so it's actually improved the situation quite a bit for us. So, let's see. Oh, hand me that half inch wrench over, Bob. All right. Y'all don't go crazy tightening down on your radiators. Um, they're just aluminum. Be nice to them. Bolt some nuts in. All right, just like that. And one in here. Looking better all the time. And don't forget, if you really love what we're doing, and what we're trying to accomplish on Dirt Race Life, check out at the end of my video the link for join, join to become a member. Again, it is a sponsorship. There's never any hidden content. It is, it is just because you love the content and you want to support what we're doing and help us to be able to make more of this content across more different types of dirt racing. Like I said, I'm building a street stock over here right now. This is a Sportsman Lake model. I'm not stuck on any one. I love everything on dirt. And uh, I want to just see the sport as a whole grow. So I appreciate it. Check it out if you're interested, y'all. Thank you. All right. And there's that one. I hope somebody's not standing where you're doing yeah. that. You got it? Yeah. Now the only downside to a fan shroud, and people don't want to run fan shrouds because of it, but you need to run a fan shroud, is you do have to put your fan in and you gotta work your arms around there to do it. It's not the most fun, but it has to be done, y'all. It's the task you got to do. So like this egged out on us just a little bit. That's the reason you do a half inch. So it's gonna end up being like a quarter inch and three quarters of an inch because of that. That's fine. It's nothing's perfect, but it's gonna be fantastic compared to where we were. I would tell, I would tell Dylan starting out, leave four blades on it. Especially with it only a 17 inch fan. Mm -hmm. Fine boys going two blades and three blades. That's a 19 inch fan. They're doing that. Yeah. One. We so, started out with three and then yeah. went to four. But went to four. It didn't week. really help. Mm -mm. Yeah, that makes sense that it wouldn't, though, considering the situation. All right. We got that hoping to run maybe four blades in the summertime and, and the cooler temperatures get mm -hmm. down to three, maybe, you know, or two if well, you have to. Which it ain't even taking off a lot of weight at three or two, because if the no. whole thing is a whole, it, but it's what the fan that was on it, that weighs about a quarter of what it we're doing. It ain't the weight, it's the horsepower. Was it's it? Not, it's the horsepower it pulls. Anyway. Okay, so let's see. You know, we're fairly close over here. That's our closest. That's our closest right there. But it's rigid. It ain't. Yep. Is that going to be too close? No, it? it's fine. It's fine. So what do you think? Fan shroud, done. About two hours total time on it. No special tools required. So if you're overheating or you're running a little warm or something and you don't have a fan shroud, or now that you've watched this, you see that you could do one better, get after it, y'all. Thank you.